And today I'll be reading the second chapter entitled The Unavoidable Cup. The Unavoidable Cup. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. As we walked along home from service, she said, what have you done to Judas here? The implications were many. She said, did you make him a dark Christ figure essential to our oneness? Or must the church always carry two scapegoats? Must we really be grateful to Judas too? The dozen hearers thanked me for cleaning up Judas, though that was not my intention. And what startled me utterly by saying at the door, I knew a man named Judas. I had said only one kind of animal was only named Judas. So she said, I know a man named Judas, and I braced. Then she added, he was a train robber, <laughs> and I relaxed. Have I done a dangerous thing to Judas and to us? Indeed so. But we do not create a Judas cult. Judas is no dark Christ. Judas is not necessary to our atonement. Judas, rather is the typification of our need and guilt, not its justification. Judas is never Saint Judas. If he were, this would sanctify every dark magic, every deep sorcery, every witchcraft, every bloody mass that has ever appeared in religion's name. No, Judas is no Saint Judas. Judas is victim. Judas is sufferer. He's not a wayfarer, wayfarer, viator, victor. Judas is there, but Judas is not a pilgrim. Judas goes nowhere. He was a roadside execution and represents no victory. Judas is tragedy. Judas is metanoamai, remorse. But he is not metanoia, repentance. Ah, if Judas had turned, what reconciling. But no scapegoat turns. He loses his character as scapegoat if he turns. Scapegoat is not scapegoat if he comes back to camp. He did not turn, and we must let him go. Out of the week, he is gone now, and the light will shift to the sacrificial lamb. We do not forget Judas. He is just not on stage anymore. For the light turns now to the altar and the sacrificial lamb and stops. There isn't any redemption in a Judas death. Only sorrow and darkness. He, Judas, was a victim just as any other is victim. But he was not viator. He had no way through. He was not wayfarer, though his cup seemed as unavoidable as ours. So we had two lambs at the altar and in the wilderness. And one is gone and the light now swings to the altar lamb and stays there. Lamb at the altar, lamb in the wilderness. How long they had acted these things out with lambs, these searing visual images of redemption, these bloody stumbling bearers of a hope of atonement with their little throats cut, these longing, reaching quests for oneness, this millennium old craving to be right. Israel's eagerness to be rid of guilt, this wholesale flight from Sartre's flies rolling down our throats in clusters, the flies of guilt that are everywhere with ideas so powerful and universal, with symbols so moving and searing, with poetry like this Jewish symbolism, this drama with dumb symbols that could only bleat their responses 
with this thousand year old Passover slaying for guilt's sake. Josephus counted over 248,000 lambs slaughtered in the Passover feast in Jerusalem in the year 70. With these bleeding lambs, it was impossible that that sooner or later the place of the lamb would be acted out. For a little lamb would not do as a symbol forever. symbols are nearly always acted out. Our great ideas sooner or later are personified. Abraham Lincoln was offered the way of race extermination for Negroes in 1863. This would solve the contraband problem that Grant and others were facing. But he turned away from the notion of mass, mass extermination in shuddering horror. Less than 80 years later, there came a man mad enough to act out the symbolic idea of race extermination. The modern so-called sex revolution is a wholesale acting out of symbols of a dark and secret craving for freedom and license. Anglo-Saxon pride is a tribal provincialism, a very small tribe and a very small province, by the way, but now being acted out as a white nationalism. The thirst for power and mobility now symbolized with 300 horsepower machines is acted out in the pitiless highway slaughter of thousands. These great powers are nearly always acted out on stage somewhere. A lamb would not do forever. Sputnik's dog or the monkey put in Ranger One were not enough to inhabit space. A man had to go in, go in orbit sooner or later. And so it was, a lamb couldn't do forever. History being history and symbols being symbols, someone must go on the altar wherever our symbols are taken seriously. Human sacrifice is ultimately an unavoidable idea in sacrificial faith systems from Mexico to Asia Minor, from Mexico to Asia Minor, the ceremonies that begin with the crushing of wheat in the mystery religion wound up sooner or later in the crushing of life. What terrible power ordains this? I do not know. I simply do not know. But all of a sudden in dark Gethsemane, a chalice, a bedewed dripping chalice shines like a jewel filled with a dark and bitter brew and the lamb shrinks back. Father, would it be possible let this cup pass? And in Matthew, stone silence, no ministering angel, no disciples hovering over, no voice from the blue to comfort. Matthew has it right, according to my experience. When you cry sharpest, the answer is what Ignatians called it. Seed, utter, dark, silence. Father, it could be possible. Again, the cry to avoid. If this cannot pass unless I drink it. But what makes him think it would pass if he did drink it? If this cup cannot pass except I drink it, what makes him think it would pass if he drank it? It, it would choke him. Judas drank his cup and nothing passed. It was a dead end. What is this incredible notion that a cup like this will pass if you drink it? And you, with your unavoidable cup that has loss in it or grief in it or death in it and guilt in it and need in it and despair in it, what makes you think such a cup will pass if you drink it? Victim? A viator. All of us are victim. 
us who are both victim and wayfarer, only for those who are both victim and wayfarer passing through, will it pass? But you see, I don't know how old you have been, have to be to know this. I've met people who know it and are very young. The difference is not in the cup that is there. The difference is not in the drop that is in the cup. The difference is not in the brew. The difference is not in whether you sip it or quaff it off. Some I've watched drink death like a toast to life. And I've never accustomed myself to seeing men drink death like a toast. Some drink death like a terrible emetic that disgorges as it goes down. But the difference, the difference is in the drinker, not the drink. All of our unavoidable cups are fatal brews. These drinkers of unavoidable cups, these who pass the cup, the ability to pass the cup is in the drinker, not the drink. He is a viator and victim. Christ turns dark to light and night to day, but he cannot pass this up by avoiding it. He, you, Viator, Wayfair, can pass this cup only by quaffing it. And you, which, which are you? Victim who stops here or Wayfair who goes through? We're both, I hope. But we do not yet know, do we? We are amateurs here. I heard a man describe a terrible 17 hour vigil in which he watched over his own stricken course alone, but was not afraid, was grateful not to be afraid and was not really alone. He willed his suffering into life. The difference is in the drinker and we all have our cup. Suddenly it gleams there in your Gethsemane and you can't take your eyes off it. You shrink back, but you take and drink all of it. So the only way to pass it is to drink it. And life beyond becomes something in your hands too. You'll notice this week that Christ never turned back again. There is nothing else from which he shrinks. He is the Ator. He is headed through this. And that is why the light stays on him. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn with Christ how to be a way maker, not just a victim. Help us to drink the cups that we've been given with confidence that in the end we stand with the victor. Name Jesus, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Victim or viator, church. Scripture testifies over and over again, you are loved and there is nothing you can do about it. See you tomorrow.